There we go. Is that working now? <laughs> oh my gosh, I am having struggles today. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I am struggling today with tech, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. I was sitting here for mm, about eight minutes thinking, well, someone's bound to come. I'm like, well, I'll post on, on Facebook. Hmm. No response yet. Where's everybody? And then uh, when you're like, where's the link? I'm like, oh, let me double check that. And of course, it's private. <sighs> I don't know why StreamYard did such, I don't know why StreamYard did me dirty. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have StreamYard? If you want, you can pop on if you, if you want to be live too. Otherwise, I can just sit here and talk to the chat. <laughs> Uh, I am doing all right. I am happy it's the weekend, although I do have some homework due this evening, but nothing too out out there. Um, my back's doing a little better. Um, my hips was been having fun lately. Um, I had that injection into my hip socket the other day, and for about a week afterwards, my hip hurts. Um, since uh, it's a 22 gauge needle, which I think is about this long, maybe around there. Um, I didn't look at it because I didn't want to see it, <laughs> but it's a pretty big needle and they have to go through your thigh all the way up to your hip to inject this uh, steroid. It's not fun. I have a little bruise around my thigh. Yeah, so my hips, the muscle more specifically is a little sore. Um, I've got this little mark there. Um, he has to take, the doctor has to take this blue pen and kind of draw, um, cause he has to use the ultrasound to guide the needle into the hip socket. So he doesn't, you know, stab around there cause that sounds like fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's like this whole red or not red, but purple circle around it. So it looks like this nasty bruise, but thankfully it's not, it's just this little bitty pin prick. But yeah, I tend to be a little sore after these things. Um, I get these injections maybe once every two years or so. No, it was about that time again. So just glad it's over. I would actually much rather have the COVID vaccine than this. <laughs> COVID vaccine takes five seconds. This takes about 10, 15 minutes ish, depending on how long it takes to numb my leg first. <laughs> how are you? have a bunch of random makeup sitting here. I filmed a video the other day and I didn't put any of the stuff away, but I'm like, do I want to do my makeup on, on live? And then I realized, well, it won't be any different than the video I'm editing. So <laughs> it'll be, be interesting to try to contrast that if that makes any sense. I feel like my words are here jumbled, but then when they come out, it's like, it's like grabbing into a bag, like, here's a grab bag, here's a grab bag, here's some words, throw it out there. Does it make sense? If not, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, do you have allergies or do you, you have a cold? That does not sound fun. Of course, it's that time of year for allergies. That stinks. I wonder if Sam can hop on. I saw her online a little while ago. Let's see. Ah, okay. Well, that's good. That means that itchiness will just go away once you get all the sawdust out of the air. But that's exciting about your wedding stuff. I uh, 
I watched, I, did my comment not show up? I've been having issues with my phone whenever I leave a comment. Sometimes it just sits and spins and then it doesn't post after I navigate away and then I feel badly because I'm like, I don't even remember what I said, but I know it didn't post. So I remember seeing your video about um, the wet, the wedding, um, kind of your plans and the dress and all that fun stuff. Oh, poor kitties. <laughs> Speaking of kitties, I have no idea where mine are. Um, my butter cat, as I call her, was sitting right there a minute ago, but I think she jumped down. Miss Butters. I think you'll like my new video. I added some cat cam footage. So that'll be fun. Oh, yay! exciting probably not a good idea to post pictures so you at least of you wearing it until the big day just to you know keep everyone um i don't even think i know what i'm trying to say here. <laughs> like the surprise and mystery of what is she gonna wear what's she wearing on her wedding day that kind of thing <laughs> Yeah, I, I have no idea how to tie a sarong. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to even begin. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what stinks is today's all rainy, and I'm wearing this summery dress. Um, thankfully, I have nowhere to go, but this weather is nasty. It's been really nice all week, and then now it's raining and gross, and I just want to crawl back under my covers and sleep for the rest of the day. It's like... You have beautiful 70 degree weather, which I think is about, I don't know, anywhere, I'm not good at converting into Celsius off the top of my head, but I think that's in the upper, like, maybe 15, 16 degrees Celsius. I might be wrong. Let me just see. I'm going to see because I'm probably very wrong and then you're going to be like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Uh, two Celsius. Oh, I was way off. Um, so about 23 degrees Celsius. That's about how uh, warm it's been around here. No, uh -huh. <laughs> you'll get it. It just, you'll practice and practice and you'll get it right. And then when you're frustrated, just take a deep breath and remember that not everybody can get it the first time. I am I would look at that and probably be like, nope, I, uh, nope, <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, tw the 23 degrees, 75 degrees here was really nice. Um, it was sunny and beautiful. We barely had a cloud in the sky. It felt like summer. Actually, it felt like Southern California, more specifically, because that's how it is pretty much all year round, is that 65 to 75 degree in the winter and then much hotter in the summer. So it felt like a California, uh, uh, an L.A. winter here, which is actually quite nice. Um, so hopefully the, the nice weather will return shortly. Um, we tend to be very rainy in April, beginning of May, and then um, May and June, um, we get kind of an in-between. Some days are really sunny, some days kind of rainy, some days in between, some days really sunny, some days rainy. And then once um, the beginning of July hits, then it's like almost pure sunshine for a month and a half. That's the Pacific Northwest. Uh, summer. Well, Sam is not seeing my message on Facebook. So she might be busy. I She posted earlier today about our little one, about Ruby. <laughs> Ruby's for sale. Because <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Did you see that? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I had some lotion. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. I just got out of the shower. 
and my hands are so dry. Well, the nice thing about having rainy weather is I don't really, since I'm not planning to go outside, I don't really need to worry about the sunscreen. Oh, 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 now you see all my blemishes. <laughs> Up close and way more personal than probably ever needed. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I kind of closed out Facebook. Um, oh, Ruby, Sam's daughter. Uh, she was, Sam was posting a little while ago about how um, her daughter was for sale. <laughs> uh, just kind of a joke, frustration, you know mom kind of things my mom used to say that my mom, mom used to say i'm putting you on the next i'm putting you on the market <laughs> anyone want a little brat no i'm just kidding <laughs> i was actually a little brat growing up i was i'm still very opinionated um that has never changed i was very uh <laughs> hi sam <laughs> <laughs> well yay not not 4k so so not too bad this is just a little teeny bit of eczema or something it just hasn't been going away and i had a little bit up here too that finally went away um i need to just be adamant about putting hydrocortisone cream on my face which i hate doing <laughs> so how's the saturday Hopefully it's getting a little better, not so uh, frustrating. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, my curls are coming out today. I have, I have naturally curly hair, but it's so rare that they actually come out because they're loose curls. But I'm seeing them right here. It's like, yay. Oh, you see the bottom here? There's a little curl. I'm trying to do everything I can to make them like naturally come out. I use salt spray and um, I don't know. My hair just doesn't want to stay curly. Yeah, eczema is the worst, especially when it's in a spot where you can't conceal it very easily or it's just in a spot that like your hands or some place that gets a lot of friction or use. Yay, curl. No, I haven't. Um, I'm not, I've heard of it, but I haven't um, really dove into it. I need to, uh, I need to look into it a little bit more. Because um, when I was little, my ringlets, that's basically the kind of curl I have is a ringlet kind of curl. Let's see, if my, there, well, there we go. <laughs> you can kind of see it against my skin there. Very, eh. And I don't uh, blow dry my hair. I don't straighten it. I don't even dye my hair. So there's absolutely no reason for my hair to be so bleh. But it is. <sighs> Hot chocolate. That actually sounds perfect. Hmm. I actually have some Baileys too. That might be a fun way to have my hot, to have hot chocolate today. I might do that after after this life. <laughs> it actually sounds amazing. Yeah. Good good thinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't right now there's absolutely no product in my hair. Um even I have to condition my hair cuz my hair is really dry, but other than that I just um, sometimes I'll do like this really thin styling oil and I take the teeniest tiny little drop and then I rub it through my hands like this and then put it on the ends of my hair and it doesn't weigh it down, but it just, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If, if I had thicker hair, it wouldn't be as, um, as much of a struggle. I don't think, I mean, curls are kind of a tough thing anyway. My mom had this beautiful coarser hair. But I have her same coloring, just a lot finer. She didn't, I don't think she had, no, she didn't have curls. She always permed her hair, though. <laughs> uh, so when I say curls, I mean natural curls. I think I get the natural curl from my dad's side of the family. And um, 
it's kind of hit or miss with them too. It, my aunt used to get her hair permed. I don't know if she still does. Um, she used to get a spiral perm just to really enhance those curls. And I did a perm once several years ago. It was after I lost like half of my hair and I lost so much volume and I was going to cut off my hair and it was like a last resort. Like I need some volume. I need something to kind of disguise the fact that I've lost so much hair. And so I did a perm and it looked really cute for a while. And then I just lost so much hair that I was just like, nah, I chopped it all off. I went to a really short pixie after that. And then it took a long time for my hair to grow back. And then it fell out again. And then it grew back. And then it fell out again. And right now it's at this point where I have to kind of conceal it a little bit. But I have this spot right here that is all like newer growth, but it just stopped. It's not growing anymore. And it's been that way for a year. It's like about this long. <laughs> so if I went back to a pixie, no one would be able to tell. But I don't want to have a pixie right now. I've been trying to grow it out for like a year plus. Yeah, I had to think for a year plus. And uh, struggle. Why do you hate your natural hair color? I feel like my... I feel like everybody hates their natural hair color though. This is the first time in years that I've had my natural hair color. I stopped dyeing my hair, when was it? Two years ago? Something, no it was more than that, it was about two, wait. Maybe about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago, somewhere around, somewhere around there. Um, but I have had blonde hair for a long time, well I went, I was blonde for a long time with really hot, heavy highlights and the biolage, that kind of thing. And then um, it was so damaging, of course, since it's bleaching this kind of hair. <laughs> uh, so then I went, I decided I was going to go darker, but I went and did funky colors because I wasn't going to dye. I didn't want to just like dye my bleach blonde to a dark and then have it fade anyway so I went funky colors for a while I went with like this bright fire engine red for a while and then I said I'll feed this in and said goodbye to it and chopped it all off and now here we are uh, my sister has that kind of hair color too uh, she's got a lot of golden highlights to it so I'm sure that looks pretty when you add the the gold in it the hair's tough, man. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, hey, you have a really great hair day, and then other days you just don't. And um, and I feel like when you start dyeing your hair, and then you let your hair grow back naturally, you forget what you've naturally had, and then you realize, hmm, okay, there's this thing about my natural hair that I didn't like, and that's why I dyed it so much. With me, I like having dark hair, but sometimes I feel so washed out with it. Oh, not right now because I've had sun over the last couple weeks because of the nice sunny weather. So I have a, I won't say I'm tan. I'm what my normal color used to be, <laughs> but it's tan for me now. Um, well, thank you. Uh, my mom would be proud. She would, she didn't mind when I dyed my hair, but she would ask me, so are you going to go with another fun color or are you going to finally let your hair naturally grow out? <laughs> Because she stopped dyeing her. I actually, come to think of it, I don't think I ever saw my mom with dyed hair. And she used to be a hairstylist too, so that's kind of saying something. Um, she always had, uh, back in the 80s and 90s, she had that short kind of, like, it's the short hair with the perm. It's, I don't know what to really call it. Um, like in Goof Troop. <laughs> The mom, I think of her hair. <laughs> uh, but that was my mom's hairstyle for a long time. And then in the last 15 years or so, then she started letting it grow out. But she, I don't know, I think I ever saw her with dyed hair. She always used to say she had all sorts of colors in her hair, but I never saw her with them. And of course, she didn't have any pictures of herself with different colored hair. So I used to say, oh, I don't believe you because there's no pictures to prove it. <laughs> Isn't that funny how people ask us that? 
I was asked that for years since I was dying. I dyed my hair for over 16 years. I've been dyeing my hair since actually, no, I was 12. The first time I dyed my hair, I dyed my hair bright red, um, not fire engine, but like a bright auburn. And it wasn't supposed to be that color. It was supposed to be brown, like a lighter brown, but I have natural red in my hair. So of course it turned bright red. It looked really nice, except in six, my sixth grade uh, class picture, I had a green background because that's what I wanted. And we had ordered the pictures before. And then I was wearing this like blue, um, <laughs> uh, such a hideous picture, this blue pullover sweater thing like a bright blue with the green background my bright red hair and rosy cheeks i i was a very colorful child in that photo and then of course i had this it was a cute haircut but i just didn't style it it was one of those days where i was just like i don't care just get the picture done and over with and then of course those are the pictures my mom ordered that year and she gave them to everybody and i was mortified because that was such an awful picture Ugh. <laughs> But anyway, that was the first time I dyed my hair. I was 12. Um, and then I got highlights every so often since then. And then, yeah, so it's been a long time. Hey, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. Had to do the math there for a second. I'm like, wait, how old am I again? <laughs> oh, welcome back, Clara. Yay, hot chocolate. I think you might have missed me when I was, uh, missed what I said a few, when you walked off, I think. Um, I was saying, I have some hot chocolate and I have some Baileys, so I might have to do um, uh, hot chocolate with Baileys later. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's me too. And then, of course, when I got into high school, everyone was dyeing their hair black. It was the goth emo time or beginning of kind of the emo phase, but definitely more of this goth thing. I hung out with some of the goth kids at school. And, and then, of course, I was going blonde while they were going black. It was it was pretty funny. Of course, um, where I grew up on a reservation, a lot of the girls had dark hair anyway. So it, was, it cracked me up to see all these white girls. I'm going to say it nicely, like white girls who are like, blonde hair, dyeing their hair black, and it looked really harsh on them with their really light eyebrows. And no one knew to do eyebrows back in those days. And then they would get the eyebrow piercings where all you really see were the, the piercings and not so much their brows. And then they would do the heavy liner. <laughs> Actually, I thought about doing a video on that, like how I did makeup in middle school, <laughs> the goth days. <laughs> and then high school was the beginning of the emo phase. Um, where it was still kind of like the heavy makeup, but um, yeah, anyway, I just remember all these girls dyeing their hair black in school, and then they were wearing those giant wide-legged jeans with the belts and the chains and these giant ugly t-shirts and jackets over the, the long, heavy overcoats over them. <laughs> Man, they thought they were, everyone thought they were cool, except me. I always knew I didn't look cool, so I didn't care, um, but I just think back to that I'm like see I could have been cool if I just kept my hair natural <laughs> oh okay that makes sense with with school uniforms not being allowed to um yeah it's it's a lot different and especially in Asia I know that um school uniforms are a pretty big thing in all over Asia um I never went to a private school, so public schools, you could wear, I won't say you could wear anything, because that's not true. Schools definitely like to police young girls' bodies. Like this, I would not have been allowed to wear it in middle school, or high school even at that, because our um, dress code was pretty strict. Um, we had to have some sort of sleeve. Oh, I bet at 17, you were like, yes, I'm going to do all the things. Oh, uh, yeah. I So my natural eyebrows right now, they're okay, but it took a long time for them to kind of grow into a shape that I like. But you can see there's a little bit more of a gap here than there used to be when I was younger. Um, 
my hair needs to come in a little bit closer like this. <laughs> I'm going to pinch them together. <laughs> and everybody was so scared of the unibrow look. And, it, and now it's like, uh, yeah. Little did we know those little thin eyebrows back in the day would not be popular later. And we would live to regret it. <laughs> Ooh, yummy. That sounds really good. I had a handful of pretzels. And um, I have some Girl Scout cookies. So I had a, what are they called? Dositos, the peanut butter oatmeal cookies. <laughs> so healthy. So healthy. <laughs> I actually have um, some steak that I pulled out of the freezer. And I bought stuff to make a pesto and potatoes with... Uh, um, tomato caprese salad. So I'm going to do kind of an Italian style steak dinner tonight. So I'm excited. But I won't make that. That won't be for several hours now. But I might do it for lunch. We'll see. Or late lunch. <laughs> but I love Indian food is so good. Yep, that's what I have to do. In fact, if you ever watch, if I ever, I don't think I do my video, uh, my eyebrows in many videos these days. But yep, I start by going dit, 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 like three general strokes, comb through, another stroke, comb through, and then I hit the arch. <laughs> Just so I can see what I'm working with. Yeah, those black pants with the chains. I... I had this friend after um, out of high school. Uh, I was about 19, and she was a very sheltered girl um, up until she was about 20, 21. She was a year and a half older than me, I think. She's very sheltered. Um, and at the time, I had been going to this very strict Pentecostal church. And that's how I – That's actually, I met her on the bus – uh, on the bus when I was going to school and she had invited me to come hang out with her and she didn't really specify what that meant. So I ended up going to church with her and her family on a Wednesday night. And I just thought, this eh, something to do. It seems interesting. I'm curious. And then she went from being this strict Pentecostal girl to this total goth girl. So she had kind of like this goth renaissance so everything that we experienced in you know the early 2000s and maybe going into the mid 2000s or at least the early like 2000 to 2007 2008 ish uh she uh she kind of got to live that later in life so it was kind of a throwback but it was really funny because, you know, she would she always wanted to go into Spencer's and Hot Topic. And me, that's, I just, that's not my style necessarily. And I don't really, back then I didn't really have a specific style, but I knew that wasn't my style. <laughs> so uh, I, I would have to watch as she would grab all these pairs of pants and ask me, which one do you think would look better? And I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea because all of them are same bagginess. They all have chains. They're all black. This one has a tear. Do you want a tear? I don't know. What's cool? This was cool back when I was in school, but I don't know if it's cool anymore. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... Well, you're in Florida. Were, were you? Are you from Florida originally? I forget. Uh, but I know in the South, Pentecostalism is <laughs> quite popular. Um, for our church, we had a lot of folks coming up to visit from Texas and uh, some from Arkansas and Mississippi, which was interesting, but a lot from Texas. Yeah, yep, yeah, the whole fakeness. I still have, um, I still know people who do the whole goth thing. Uh, hi, Louise. Welcome. It's good to see you. Hope you're having an awesome day. Um, but going back to that fakeness, um, 
so there's this gal that was friends with my kind of a long story she is my sister-in-law's cousin but she grew up she, small town small reservation you know everybody so anyway she befriended me on facebook about two years ago and i didn't i mean my brother's 10 years older than me so not my crowd by any means they're way older i was not cool enough i wasn't even old enough to hang out with them let's just say it anyway uh, so she's very into the goth scene and <laughs> she'll post stuff on Facebook every so often saying this is a real goth This is a fake goth and I'm like uh, Okay, I don't know the difference, but I okay sure <laughs> And she still wears those big baggy pants and the in the chains and she does the really thick eyeliner around her eyes and doesn't do her brows and has the piercings and the, she does that deep vampy lip with it and she's beautiful so it, lo it looks good on her because she's native like I am but she's darker than me uh, so she it it doesn't make her look, well it's kind of funny because you know goth is like pale you kind of want to be pale I guess is the thing but she's not pale this is like her like this is kind of like a normalish tone for me but for her this would be pale Anywho, <sighs> um, oh, I'm gonna get some water. <sighs> My throat's been scratchy. Um, let's see. I'll quickly show you this palette that I got the other day. I did, um, I filmed a video. Oh, hello. There we go. I filmed a video using this palette the other day. So I won't go into all the details because I'll have that up soon. Um, it's like, you know me, I'm a Jabber Jaws. So the video, not edited at all, was an hour and 15 minutes long. So I just sit there and chat and chat and chat. So I'm like a quarter of the way through it, like, shoot me now. Why do I talk so much? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that's kind of the reason I don't subscribe to any particular, like, group scene trend um i won't say trend maybe trend's not the right word but definitely scene um i mean there was a t i remember in high school when i kind of went through this phase of punkish but not quite um i remember green day had made their reprisal with american idiot and i was obsessed with that album but i had always loved uh green day but for this anti-establishment and this punkish thing to be revived and then, you know, thinking about, thinking about, back, that's not what I meant to say, thinking back to the music my brother used to listen to and my brother was a total metalhead, uh, the 80s metal and then a lot of the death metal stuff that I just will stay away from. It's not, I'm, nope, nope, just nope. Uh, he used to, he, he listened to a lot of eclectic, more rock oriented music and a lot of punk stuff. So anyway, I just kind of recalled listening to a lot of that with him when he used to have to babysit me. Uh, and then I kind of got into that kind of music myself. Um, I, I won't say I didn't listen to pop. It was, I listened to it. It wasn't my absolute favorite, although now I love listening to early 2000s pop music. It just brings, you know, it's like the, it's just this whole throwback and the nostalgia of it. It's like, oh yeah, I'll sing, I'll sing along to Britney. I'll sing along to Backstreet Boys, you know, who cares? I'm cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'll keep that in mind because I feel like the last couple of videos I've posted are really long and um, they haven't gotten as many views as I was hoping they would. So it's like, oh, maybe I should go shorter ones. But then I intended film a short one and then it turns into like a 30 plus minute video. And I'm like, I don't want to be scripted, but I might just have to be <laughs> just to keep myself on track or have a little timer in front of me like, you're only allowed to talk about this for 10 seconds, and <laughs> Yeah, this palette, it's a Makeup Revolution. This is, I haven't bought a palette in a while. Uh, so this was just kind of a random whim buy. 
because Okay, sorry, um, I don't know if you heard that, but apparently one of my neighbors really wanted to say hello to someone. <laughs> oh, really? The, the back shoe? Do you know it? Well, I guess it wouldn't surprise me because most of them are from the South and the South has a lot of conservative folks. <laughs> yes, yes, that is Bashy Boys. It's um I want it that way. So quick story because it's super cute. My niece is seven years younger than me. As I said, um my brother my one brother is ten years older than me and the other one is eighteen years older than me, so very uh a lot older. <laughs> so their kids are my age or younger, just slightly younger than me. Um, and, or my sister. So anyway, my, my first born niece is seven years younger than me. And she used to come over to our house. We would have her over at the house and she would stay a week with us. Uh, cause she didn't live in the same town as us. So, um, during the school year, she would come and, um, spend a weekend with us, or we would go get her during the summer and have her stay with us for a month or so. Anyway, when she would stay with us, um, she was obsessed with the Baxter boys. She loved Brian Luttrell and, you know, for a seven year old, it's super cute, right? So we would hear her in the bathroom or in the back room, um, and she would sing to herself. But when she was in the bathroom, she really went at it because that the sound, that echo, the the acoustics of the bathroom is so much better and you sound so much better to yourself. She actually has has, I'll say, a really beautiful voice. And I used to tell her, you're such a good singer, but she'd get so embarrassed because we would giggle about her singing I Want It That Way in the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, she's probably going to be mad at me for sharing this online uh, in such a public place. Oh, hi, Winnie. Hi. Are you saying hello to everybody? Oh, no, you're not even in view. Oops, wrong way. Uh, there you go. You want to say hi? What you doing? Well, no one wants to see your booty. Okay, you can come hang out. <laughs> yeah, Nick and Aaron are from Florida. I don't know where the others are from. I just remember them. I remember watching this thing about them being from Tampa or something. Like it was a documentary thing from the early 2000s. And I don't know why that's the one thing I remember about it. But yeah, they were from Florida. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of them. Uh, Yeah. Was it, I think Jamie French posted a video. Yeah, it was Jamie French. She posted a video maybe a couple of months ago about uh, one of the makeup and movies. It was one of the Aaron Carter movies from way back when. And I, I don't remember if she posted a pic, like she shared a picture of what he looks like today. Life has not been kind to him. And, and I hate saying that, but life does not look like it's been kind to either of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. That's uh, my baby. Yeah, she knows it too. That's why she's sitting there like, hey. <laughs> but if I pick her up, she will yell and whine and cry. So that's why I named her Winnie because she makes this little whiny sound all the time. If I, if I talk to her, she'll kind of do this little whimper whine sound. It's really cute. Isn't that right, Miss Minnie Winnie? Yeah, she's a little flamboyant, isn't she? Little voyeur, are you give are you giving everyone a peep show? <laughs> what you doing? What are you doing? Hi. <laughs> oh, cats. <laughs> I feel like those who actually liked the pop scene back then wanted to look wanted to fit in with that aesthetic. I remember all the boys, at least kind of the popular boys in my middle school, bleaching their hair. 
And instead of let, you know toning it and making it look decent, it was that bright, ugly orange or yellow hair. And that was the cool thing for them to do. And then they wore those horrible um, baggy shorts or pants that just with the weird belts. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, it's a style that I'm glad has long since passed and has not come back as far as I can tell. Although uh, the 90s styles that are coming back with the mom jeans and the weird pants that I wish I remember hating as a kid and my mom would buy them for me thinking they looked so cute. And I'm like, oh, I look hideous, mom. And I'm only five, but I knew I looked hideous in them. I can't believe those styles are back. So who knows what's going to happen in the next five years. <laughs> I, oh really, with Aaron? <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's he got a hard look to him. I think it's the, it was it piercings and tattoos or something? Like, I'm fine with that, but just something about his face looks very hard. I imagine that drugs and alcohol have contributed to that quite a, quite a lot. So, it's a very sad and unfortunate thing. Yeah, stirrup pants. Oh, they're great for boots. I will say that. That way you don't have to worry about your pant legs riding up. But this girl did not like wearing boots. This girl had my mom cut off the stirrups. And if she didn't, I did. And she would get so mad at me. <laughs> I used to, I, we didn't call them stirrups. I, well, as a kid, I used to call them the foot, foot, um, the pedals or something like that. Something like that. It was like my own little made up name for it. I can't remember. It was something really funny. The foot pedal straps, something like that. Yeah. The only reason I would wear those now is if I'm wearing boots. <laughs> I don't like anything on my feet, though. Um, anytime I have, even when my when the seam in my socks are off just a tad, I hate it. It drives me up the wall. <laughs> right? I feel like we, I think all kids go through that, but especially with these things where, like, I get the practicality of it, but, oh, do you remember saddle shoes? That was the popular thing when I was in elementary school. And I remember telling my mom, I can't wear saddle shoes if I wear those pants. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're going to wear your pants. And you're going to wear whatever shoes I tell you to wear. And I would tell her, but I can't wear my saddle shoes with my pants. Because my feet won't fit in those shoes. And it was true. I have wide feet, so any extra fabric on my feet made it really uncomfortable to wear those shoes. So it had to be the pants or the saddle shoes, and I wasn't about to give up the saddle shoes. <laughs> so, yeah, saddle shoes. I it's if you're not if you don't know what saddle shoes are, it's those black and white like leather looking. I don't know what to really call them. They're kind of cute, but. I definitely would not be seen wearing them today. I just say that. Yeah, saddle shoes were the cool thing. And then, um, oh, what were these sandals called? Little House on the Prairie boots. Oh, you know, I didn't actually know what Little House on the Prairie was until fifth or sixth grade. Um, I just wasn't exposed to it, I don't think, until I was older. Uh, maybe it's because of the native in me um, with a lot of the contention between white settlers and the natives that my family, well, my dad was white, so I don't, and he didn't really, he wasn't involved in that stuff, but maybe my mom was like, yeah, you're not going to read about how our, how uh, the history is distorted there. I don't know, but I wasn't exposed to Little House in the Prairie until I was much older. <laughs> oh okay and they're kind of like a tan or a brown suede I think I know what you're talking about it's funny how these shoes uh are so popular I hadn't thought about saddle shoes in so long but um 
Yeah, they're, they're kind of cute, but I, de I definitely wouldn't be wearing them. And the, or at least now, uh, the black and white ones were definitely the in style, the in vogue, on vogue uh, trend in my elementary school. All the girls who were anything to, anything worthy were going to be wearing this. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. Oh, okay. That reminds me. I had it. I did have a pair of pink cowboy girl, cowboy, cowgirl boots, whatever. Pink. <laughs> uh, I loved them. They were very uncomfortable because they had this really thick, um, clunky heel. And for a kid to wear heels is not, not the most comfortable, but especially with cheaply made ones. Um, but yeah, they were so cool. I felt fancy when I wore those. And then I had a really nice pair of native boots. They were, um, they were leather, like buckskin leather, I think. And they looked like a moccasin, but they were a boot. And they came up high and they had the fringe and there was some beadwork or something on them. And I don't remember if my mom bought them or if they were a gift. My grandpa Oh, excuse me. My grandpa used to have moccasins made for us every so often and would give us moccasins. So I'm not sure if the, that's what they were or if it was actually something my mom bought. But I remember loving them and then they got ruined somehow and then I never saw them again. And I was devastated because <laughs> I loved them. They were so comfortable too. They were so soft. I didn't feel like uh, my feet were suffocating. So Yeah, the preppy looking ones. <laughs> yeah, and um, so I grew up, well, I, I lived in a couple of towns growing up. One of them was a reservation town. Another one was uh, the small kind of like fisherman village up in the mountains. And in that town was where I went to elementary school the longest. And um, it was a lot of farming communities and um, hunting families. So that was kind of the family pastime. You would go up in the woods and you would go hunt. You would hunt with, with the men or you could stay behind and hang out in the camp or you could go fishing or you could just hang out in the camp or you can, you weren't supposed to, well, depending on where you were, but we weren't allowed to go off and hike or hang out by ourselves because there were bears and mountain lions and uh, they liked to stalk us. Well, not all reservations are poor. The one I grew up on, my re my reservation, is actually a lot of white people live there. In fact, you go on the res and you don't realize you're on a reservation at all because it's very, compared to a lot of other reservations in the country, it's a very wealthy one. Um, part of that is because there's so many white people who live there and they have to pay leasing fees and special fees to be able to live on the reservation since that land isn't... Um, necessarily theirs you know um you know i i think about oh i love going back home um i won't ever live there again because there's just nothing there um unless i well i lived on the south end of a big lake and in the summer months there's absolutely everything you want to do recreationally but in the winter months unless you're a big skier um or you like snowboarding and you like the snow then there's not much else to do. And then as far as like activities or opportunities go, there really aren't many. The nearest university is 60 plus miles away, which is not bad, but it's it's kind of limiting. Um, yeah, it's, it's limiting. Um, but it's still home. I try to go back, well, obviously with COVID happening, I haven't been going back, but I used to go back home two, three times a year to see my family. And if ever I were wealthy, I would buy a, a second home there just to have for whenever I'm there. But yeah, I wouldn't live there again. Okay, let's see. My nose is itchy. Um, I was talking, I mentioned this in the description <laughs> and I haven't even gotten to that yet. Uh, so I was gonna do the whole randomization thing to, to 
in to talk about the Project Pan, and I just realized I didn't bring any of those products in here, and I really don't want to get up to have to go dig for them. So, let's see, updates on those. Let's just say I didn't do as well as I hoped I would. Um, I did use the con, uh, the the blush a lot, and I actually made some pretty good progress. Dang it, now I wish I brought that blush in. Um, but it's kind of rubbed down where you don't see the indentations as much anymore. Some I'm actually seeing progress on a blush like that is like, yes, I'm doing so well. But then I look at the lip liner and the um, lip gloss and I realize those two were very unique colors that I didn't really wear that often. And the same with that silver eyeliner. It's a beautiful eyeliner, but I found myself getting so bored with the same eye looks over and over again because there's only so many kinds of looks you can do with the silver eyeliner. Um, and colors that go well with silver without it looking too clashy. Um, so those didn't go so well. The mascara, I'm gonna toss it pretty soon. Um, it's at it's it's on its last legs. I think it's actually beyond the expiration point. I think I'll have to double check, but mascara was all right. Um, it's still not my favorite. I found a couple others that I really like that I've been kind of digging around for since I have a bunch of unused products and I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to shop my stash and just play with things that I haven't ever used before. So there's that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Was there, there's the mascara, the lip gloss, the liner, the blush. What was the fifth thing? Oh, the eyeliner. Yeah, sorry. It took me a second. I'm like, it's out of everything. So anyway, those are the five things that I had drawn the last time. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do another random uh, selection of products for me to use over the next 30 days. And hopefully, <laughs> I am crossing my fingers and I'm going to really push myself to do this, but um, be adamant about actually using them and trying to film more with them. Um, Okay, sorry, it took me a second. I'm like, what am I doing again? I'm pulling up my Google Drive. That's what I'm doing. Let's see. Might help if I were in the right account. The only thing I don't like about um, you, like you, oh, my phone's going off because it's asking me to log in. Um. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, trying to get into my Google Drive. And sometimes when you're in one account, you can add an account and you can toggle back and forth. But sometimes it gets confused on what account I'm trying to get into. And then it's like, I don't want to have to type in my password again. You should already have this done, you know. Anyway. Um. Yeah, the well the lip gloss itself is actually pretty new and I do like it. It's it's just hard to combine all of those specific products together and trying to use them all like a pink shimmering blush with this brown toned uh, lip gloss with a uh, magenta lip liner, a silver eyeliner, and a mascara. Like it's a stretch to try to get those products to work together. Um, but, you know, we're using them separately is what I need to just be a little bit better about. Uh, but we'll see what I pull out this time because, I mean, who knows? Um, I don't have some of the new stuff that I purchased in in this list, but that's okay because the newer stuff. I'm I'd rather try to pan some of the old stuff, you know. Uh, so let me quickly go through my list here, and this is why this is. Oh, I do have some. Actually, I take that back. I do have some of this new stuff in there. Just kidding. Okay, uh, so I have 1,446 items, and I'm going to select another five. 
who in the right mind needs this much makeup? Nobody. But here, here we are. <laughs> um, okay. So 14, 46. I don't know if it's going to let me share my screen. Um, I'm going to see. I'm going to see if it'll let me. It didn't let me the last time, if I recall correctly. Yep. 1,446. Or is that, yeah, 1,446. <laughs> right? And this is every single makeup item. That's not brushes. That's not uh, cleaners. That's not, um, yeah, that's not skincare. <laughs> that's just cosmetics. It's more than any one person will ever need. Um, there's this one gal I got introduced to by another friend of mine, and she's trying to get into the beauty space on YouTube. And uh, she was asking me some questions about being on YouTube and saying how awesome it would be to get PR. And I'm like, it's great at first until you're drowning in it. And it's a lot of times in PR, you don't always get stuff that you absolutely want unless you're a bigger YouTuber. <laughs> so, I mean, not to say that I never wanted the stuff I got, but when I did receive stuff, it was stuff that I probably would not have thought to buy. And then I was trying it out and I liked it, but then there are other things I wanted to try. And it's just this endless cycle of, I want to try that and I want to try that. And then you have all these things that you've been trying and then you never get through it and it just takes up so much space. So I was trying to warn her like, it's great, but just keep in mind that um, PR can be overwhelming at times. Yes. That, this is after all the declutters. And I decluttered over 30 foundations, over, I don't even know how many, was it like 100 plus lip products. I gave my sister some makeup when she was down here last. Um, in fact, I just got some stuff in my Ipsy Glam Bag Plus. I got a brand new Ofer blush, a full size one, and I have a small palette that has that color in it. And even though I love that palette and it's my that's my my favorite blush, I'm like, I don't need a full size if I have this whole palette. So I just said, Hey Stephanie, it's her name. Hey Stephanie, you want a blush? Here you go. And she's like, Ooh, this looks pretty. I'm like, yeah, and it's an expensive blush, so you're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, I've been giving stuff away. Um, I have this whole giant container. Uh, sorry, my nose itches. Um, here we go. Um, anyway, I have this whole giant bin full of skincare stuff and uh, masks and cleansers and face balms and you name it. And anytime anyone comes over, which is obviously not that often right now, but anytime I would have friends come over, I would say, dig through this and take what you want, please. And, you know, a lot of times they would and, you know, I'd get rid of half of it. And then the next month it's full again. I'm like, how is this happening? I'm not buying anything. I would get so much skincare and PR and I loved it. But now I'm just, you've, I, I don't know if you all watched my very first like Project Pan or Project Empties. That's really what I, I'm, I'm using that interchangeably, but really it's Project Empties. Uh, but anyway, yeah, like that whole area in my bathroom is just bananas. <laughs> I'm just, it's like, no, um, that actually is why I am doing so well with my goal this year. Um, at the beginning of the year, or rather at the end of last year, when I did my whole beauty makeup res res bleh, resolutions, if I could talk, that would be great the whole beauty resolutions for the year. And I said I was going to limit myself to one singular purchase every month. It didn't have a price limit or anything like that. But one singular purchase. Well, I made one in January. I made one in February. And then this, uh, I didn't do any in April. Uh, sorry, any in March. And in April, I just bought a handful of things when I went to Ulta. And I really went to Ulta for this. This is all I really went there to buy because I was... When I did all the lip swatches, I went through all my uh, makeup wipes. Um, but other than that, like, there wasn't much that I really wanted. 
are needed. And I talk a little bit more about this in my in the video that I'm editing right now about some of the products I bought and why I bought them. But yeah, I because I get my Ipsy every month, I just I don't really have this whole desire to go out and buy makeup. And after seeing everything that's in my collection, I feel inspired to use the stuff I have. My goodness, I have like a cat here or something that's really bothering my nose. Sorry, this looks so lovely. <laughs> like digging here out my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. So this is not counting single eyeshadows. I only have palettes listed. The end of, actually, let me double check. I don't think, no, I'm pretty certain I don't have the single eyeshadows listed. At least not the depotted ones. I do have singles that are still in compacts. Those are listed. Let's see, if I just go to my Makeup Geek section, that'll help, or Mac. Okay, never mind, I'm just kidding. That does count them. Okay, okay, well now I don't feel as berserk. <laughs> but still, it's a lot of makeup. <laughs> well, I'm particular in what I give away. Skincare stuff that I'll never get through, absolutely. Makeup wise, I am particular because one, I won't give away anything that I can't sterilize. Two, I'm not gonna, I don't actually haven't given away any eyeshadow palettes. Except, brand, well, actually, I just realized um, I have this bag full of makeup sitting on, on my storage. And I, I was gonna bring that up to my sister and I forgot. There's a beautiful eyeshadow palette that I got uh, in my Ipsy bag last month. And was it last month? Well, anyway, in the last couple of months, and I'll never use it. It is a boring neutral palette. It's a pretty but boring neutral palette, and I have 20 plus of them, right? <laughs> I will never use it. So I thought, I'm going to admire it. It's pretty. Okay, I'm not even going to swatch it. Put it away. So, yeah. I, I <laughs> uh. I'm trying to be realistic and and curbing my purchases. I really do not need to buy makeup anymore. And the only time I do is if I find something that's truly unique or I've run out of something, which is why I purchased one of the things that's in here um, from my other video. I keep referencing it, but anywho. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Yeah, if you want to come to Seattle, come hang out. That'd be awesome. Just come in the summer months, though, because otherwise you're going to have to deal with nasty rain. And nobody likes the nasty rain here. <laughs> the Golden Girls live in Florida, though, so I, I don't think they have the Golden Girls of, of Seattle. I think that would be the crabby, crabby vampire girls. <laughs> and that kind of works, too, because I, uh, because of twilight and all that stuff <laughs> i didn't even think of that until after i said that I'm like well, actually that does kind of work because twilight and forks tiktok house <laughs> yeah i'm sure you have more rain than we do but today i say that i say nasty rain because we have some rain after a whole week of having beautiful weather so i'm just kind of like no bring back the sunshine um we we get rain almost every day for the whole winter we don't really get a lot of snow here when we do it's minimal it lasts maybe a day and then it goes away and then it's back to nasty slushy rain um or sleet and sleet's not fun I like that. I like that idea. You know, I think, so I, I think you remember, I have friends who live in uh, the Orlando area. So I think if they were trying to convince me to move to Florida at one point, and I thought, mm, it's very humid. I don't do well with humidity. My hair might like it, because maybe it'll bring out some of that curl. But my, my lungs don't like the humidity. <laughs> Although, 
if they were cheap enough to do it, I would move to Maui. But I actually do want to move to LA. I, I really want to move to LA. Um, I am planning to eventually move to LA. Eventually. <laughs> Real estate's always going to be expensive there. It's expensive here in Seattle. Um, I bought a condo two years ago. And uh, it'll be three years in October. And in just the two and a half years that it has been, I've already, my, the condo across the way from me sold for $60,000 more than I paid for mine. So I'm like, ooh. Well, <laughs> I guess I got in on real estate at the right time, but it's like I I couldn't imagine trying to buy again though. So, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few years. But LA um isn't I people say it's more expensive than than Seattle, but I would argue and say Seattle is probably more expensive in some ways. Um granted, we don't have a state income tax. Uh, and we don't have certain taxes here, but we have other taxes that are really expensive. So our sales tax, for example, at least in King County where Seattle is, is almost 11%. So any purchase that you make that is not food, that's not, um, let me rephrase that, that is a grocery item that isn't prepared food or soda um, or soft drink or anything like that. Uh, but everything else is taxable and you pay up, up to almost 11% on taxes on everything you buy. Uh, and then we, and we have really expensive car tab renewals. So anytime, uh, actually I have to get mine done in the next week or two. Car registration um, goes on the value of your car. Uh, not so much, um, not it's not a flat fee so if you have a really expensive car you pay more for your registration uh so yeah it's it's expensive to live here in real estate it has increased over a hundred percent in the last several years and yeah it's it's ridiculous it's it blows my mind because i first moved to seattle at in 2012 and at that time just as an example, I, I was renting a room in this really cute house with some other, uh, and I had other roommates. And the house down the street from us, we lived in a really nice neighborhood, so I, I'll give it that. But the house down the street from us, which was a lot nicer than the one we were in, was selling for like $400,000, which is out, it's expensive. That same house is valued at almost 800000 now. So it's probably more, it's probably closer to a million if I'm, if I'm going to be honest, because it was a pretty sizable house. The old house I lived in um, was probably valued closer to 800, 900,000 now. So it's, and it's, a, well, the house we lived in was an 1800 square foot four bedroom house and the bedrooms are pretty small. The downstairs base, the basement was unfinished. Um, we had a really cute backyard that was fenced in, but. I mean, there's nothing unique or special about where we lived, but yeah, it's it's priced really high. Oh, sorry, Louise. Yes, yeah, Seattle is um is north of California by well, it's two states up. So right, it's if you know where Vancouver is, we're south of that by about a hundred miles. Oh, uh, oh, for, um, well, yes, I've only been to Florida in the summer months because that just so happened to be the time to go. But then I've been kind of warned to be careful about what other times I come in just in case it's hurricane season. <laughs> so I don't know. I know it's, it would depend, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Asheville listing you saw is probably on par with what we're seeing here in Seattle. As I said, my t my 
modest two bedroom condo has gone up in um, in value over sixty thousand dollars in two and a half years it blows my mind i'm so glad i bought when i did um and in fact there's a new condo development going in by the mall and oh my gosh uh i think they're almost sold out and they're still not even done building them and they have a sign outside saying that what they start at and they're starting at like five hundred thousand dollars and these are condos they're not even houses they're like apartments and we're not even in i don't live in seattle proper i live outside of seattle and it's expensive and it just it's it blows my mind to be honest so anyway going back to the whole la thing like la i've been to la so many times i used to go there once or twice a year for years and um you know there's certain parts that are really expensive but then there's other parts that aren't uh and just like the seattle area if you know where to well seattle's kind of a weird outlier i think maybe i don't know <laughs> but the la area has some areas around it that aren't as expensive in terms of real estate in terms of cost of living um work wise i don't i don't know that i would ever be able to be a full-time youtuber and actually make a living off of it that would be uh comparable to what i'd make you know working a typical nine to five or kind of job but if i did then that would be a different story but um you know working at the wages that i expect to make living there i i could do it i would i would be comfortable but again it just depends on where i'm at obviously malibu would be out of the question or even um what is it uh or up in the hills um shucks what's it called is it oxnard no it's not oxnard i can't remember the town it's this little town just kind of north of los angeles proper and it's where the really expensive houses it's like where jeffrey star and shane dawson and all of them lived They're like multi-million dollar homes <laughs> i've actually only been to north carolina once and it was a touchdown in charlotte i'll be honest one of my best friends moved to raleigh a few years back and she always tells me about how pretty it is she misses the pacific northwest of course because this is her home but she always talks about how pretty it is thank you yes calabasas thank you i was like what is it again i was my brain kept saying chula vista and i was like no that's not it that's not it <laughs> I knew it started with a C, but I couldn't think of what it was. So thank you. Yay. Oh, you know what? I am, um, I'm a scatterbrain. I, um, go off on tangents and then forget what I'm doing. Okay. So let's go into random.org and do this whole thing. <laughs> kind of get us back on topic here. So if you would like to do the honors in selecting some numbers, from 1 through 1,446. Oh, you're so cute. Hi. What you doing? You just, is it your job to be cute? Mm. I have never tried any Jeffree Star makeup. I've met, after I met him and he was just, he wasn't very nice to me. Um, it, actually, I met him before his makeup line was launched. Um, he had just started gaining some notoriety in the beauty space with his YouTube and such. Um, he just was not very nice to me. Uh, one of my friends that I was at the event we were at with, and no one really knew he, who he was. He wasn't, you know, bombarded by people. Um, he was just kind of walking around. And my friend recognized him and said, hey, um, can I get a picture with you? I love your music. I love your et cetera, et cetera. And he was like, he was really nice to her. And he's like, yeah, that'd be great. And then um, I, I, I took the picture and I was like, oh, I'd love to get a picture too. And he just kind of looked at me and just walked off. And I was like, wow, okay that wasn't very nice but okay so ever since then i've been kind of like mm, yeah and then of course obviously with all the um drama and whatnot it's like yeah 1349 congratulations it's so exciting 
I can't wait to see the pictures of this house. Yay! I remember you talking about that a while back, about how you're saving and holding off on buying anything because you're waiting to get this house. So yay! Okay, whoops. I keep knocking into stuff. So 1349. Let's see what that is on my list. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. 1349. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's that's good. This is a newer product and it's the Urban Decay Brow Blade. Um, so it's that dual ended brow pencil. It's got the pencil and then the liquid ink thing. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, since it's newer, um, and actually I like the one half of it, but I don't like the, the blade part of it. So it'll be good to try to get use out of that because, you know, Urban Decay stuff isn't cheap. So yay. Okay. Let me just write this down. I'm glad that there's like this basic kind of product that I could use every day and not have to worry about it clashing with everything, you know? Okay, Urban Decay Brow Blade. Okay, 90. Okie doke, let's see. Scroll back up, scroll, scroll, scroll. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Beauty from the Earth. Oh, it's a pigment. It's called, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. It's Ushakaran. Usha, Ushakaran. I don't know what color that is. I'm, I'm going to see if I can Google it really quickly. If beauty from the earth even still exists. Beauty from the earth. Yes, they do. Nope. Yes, they do. Do they sell makeup though? That's the question. Hey, can you stop that? Um, um, I don't think they carry makeup anymore. I think it's like skincare. Oh, actually, I take that makeup removers, lip balms, beauty tools. But no cosmetics or makeup. Okay. Let's see. Well, anyway, it's a pigment. <laughs> um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's um, kind of a pinky coral tone. I could be very wrong. So let me write this. Beauty from the Earth pigment. Ushaka Rome. Cool. I kind of wish I brought, I, I wish I was streaming from my laptop right now so I could actually pull out this makeup. Um, because obviously my makeup's in the other room. But the reason I do it in here is because my ring light and my other lighting is in here and my bedroom gets the worst lighting possible. Oh. Well, oh, hold on. Kitty cat, you get out of there. Get out of there. You stop chewing on stuff. Ugh, I love my cats. I love my cats. I love my cats. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, she likes to chew on plastic and wood and my shoes. She's eaten four pairs of my shoes. I don't know. I don't know. She's like a dog. She's not a cat. She's a dog in a tinier body. She's a chocatwa. I don't know. That wasn't funny, but anyway. Okay, so, okay, you are watching the Jeffree Star video because you're driving. Yeah, I could, I, I guess, with his energy, that would make sense. And, you know, I, no shame in, in watching that, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it is a shame because I, I have watched some of his videos. I'll be honest, uh, after the first Shane Dawson thing came out with the video that painted him in a different light, I was kind of seeing him in a different way. 
And I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll give him a chance. Um, and I kind of, I didn't really watch a lot of his stuff. I would watch it on occasion. If there's a review or something that he posted that seemed interesting, I might watch it. But it wasn't that often. But, yeah, it's, it, his energy is very, it's very uplifting in some way. So I get it. But yeah, it's a it's such a bummer because he with as much privilege as he has and how much wealth he has, he could use that for so many wonderful things, especially given his background. And it blows my mind because we all know that he's been hurt a lot by, you know, being kind of the other, you know, being um, gender fluid in a society that's very dead set on being either female or male and fitting into these boxes of gender norms. And he definitely didn't fit into those norms. So he kind of accepted and embraced this counterculture and then kind of unabashedly pushed against anyone else who might not, I don't know, who might not embrace that same culture. But then I think he swung that pendulum so far that he's so aggressive with it on top of just being mean because he's been so hurt by other people that it's his way of making sure he doesn't get hurt again, that he's cruel to other people and he controls them with his money. And it's such an unfortunate thing because he could do so much for youth who are experiencing a lot of the same things that he did. I mean, that isn't to say that he's not doing that, but just using his platform, he could do a lot more, I think. But I guess it's not for... For, it's not for me to judge necessarily because obviously I'm not in his shoes and I definitely don't have his wealth and I don't know what's going on in his personal life, but it is a bummer that we don't get to see that. Okay, I, I missed a lot of stuff here. Hold on. Yes, Urban Decay Brow Pencil, Be Easy to Pan. Uh, collection, we do. Sorry. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, yes, Google. <laughs> oh, it took me a second to kind of gather my thoughts. Yeah, I, I'm Google is my best friend. <laughs> and I do the same thing. Or what I'll even do is um, I'll just go to older videos where I know I've used a product and just copy and paste it from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yep you you beat me to that writing the description yeah okay um Aww. <laughs> oh a little ruby okay five 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 i've got you louise let's let's see what that is Scroll down, scroll, 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 scroll. L'Oreal Infallible Lip Cream and Forbidden Kiss. If I am not mistaken, that is either a bright pink or it's a nude. It's one of the two. I'm thinking it's the pink one because I'm I have it in alphabetical order with all the L'Oreal products listed together. And I'm seeing all these other lip creams together. Oh wait, just a second. No, it might not be. I'm just kidding. I don't know what that is. I was thinking it was a different product altogether. I was thinking it was um, a different kind of lip product. And then I realized it's not. So therefore, I don't know what I'm talking about because I have 12 of those and I don't know what na which names correspond to which colors. So I have no idea what color that is. <laughs> I love admitting I'm wrong. <laughs> Infall lip cream or in kiss. Actually, I remember buying this little collection. The, this one's a mini, so it's not even a full size. But I remember when I bought this, it was at the recommendation of Emily Noel because she was obsessing over the L'Oreal lip creams and she was saying how nice they were. And I bought them and I liked them, but I haven't used a lot of them. Um, I think because they just kind of fall under the radar. Um, not sure why, but I'm excited to pull that out. I'm actually going to Google this one too. 
and see if I can find what color that is. Because I don't know. If, I think they still make these. Um, infallible lip cream forbidden kiss. Oh, it's kind of a berry tone. Yeah, it's um, it's a pretty berry, like a almost a wine kind of berry. Okay, that'll be pretty. Um, and with these creams, I if I don't want it to be super pigmented, um, they're easy to sheer down because they're not a liquid lipstick. So that that's a that's a nice color. Yay! Yeah, I, man, MySpace days. Well, of course, with the gothic scene and the music scene on MySpace, he was really popular on that side. I have never been a fan of that kind of music, so he never really was in my radar until a little bit later. Um, I remember seeing him on MySpace, but yeah, um, it just wasn't my scene. <laughs> And same with Bi Sister. I, I agree. Um, I still think he's involved with that whole situation. And we just don't see a lot of it publicly because we've seen him and how much damage is done to his reputation and how much it's hurt him. So I have a feeling there's still a lot going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing, which I'm fine with. I've actually stopped paying attention to a lot of the, the stuff around that because I just it's overwhelming. It's just, it's someone else's life. And since they're not a part of my daily life, then I feel like I don't need to know unless it's something that affects me or is something I'm genuinely curious in. And there's so many videos on YouTube that talk about, like Peter Mon just uploaded another video the other day and it pops up in my suggested feed. And I like Peter, but I just don't want to regurgitate the same news cycle, the same people over and over again. So I stopped paying attention, or at least I try to. YouTube doesn't want to let me. <laughs> but I agree. I After the whole bias sister situation, I just, like, I'm team Tati in that whole situation. I always have been because um, I just, even though my exp my exposure to him or my limited interaction with him was that limited, I still just, the way he was very rude to me, it was, I mean, back then I was a lot heavier um, and he's like some of the stuff that's come out about Trisha Paytas and him uh, body shaming her and hearing that is just a remembrance of how he made me feel in the way he looked at me. So it just was something that you know, I thought for a while, I thought, well, maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe I'm just blowing it all out of proportion. But after that, it's just a, it's just a validation of, nope, what I felt from him was accurate. And he and I would definitely never be friends in real life. Like he's not my people, <laughs> as a lot of people say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I'm kind of like reading old comments and then I scroll down and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. So fuchsia pink, yeah, the dark fuchsia berry one. That one's really pretty. Yeah, I would say music is an interesting term to apply. Um, I, or rather, it's music to him. I can't, I can't judge too much on the music scene because what other people enjoy doesn't necessarily mean I have to enjoy it and vice versa. It's when people say they're singing and it's like, you're not singing. You're just talking. You're not even rapping. You're not even doing anything unique with your voice. You're just talking. It's not singing. It doesn't take talent to speak. But maybe that's just me with my music theory, musician, superiority complex. <laughs> Peter reminds me of, oh, there was someone I used to know who was very energetic and out there. And 
it's fine for me in small doses. I can't with that strong energy. He's so outgoing and, and I love that. And if I need that kind of energy in my life, he's one of the first video people or one of the first YouTubers I'll click on or someone like Manny MUA or whoever is just naturally very energetic. Um, but for the most part, he speaks so fast that I'm like, okay, I, I speak fast. And sometimes I speak so fast that I can't even articulate because I'm tripping over my words because I speak so quickly and it's just like, you know, but sometimes I'm like, slow down. I actually can't understand you, which is weird. <laughs> um, but he does remind me of some of the friends I've had that I loved going out with. When you have a when you go out with friends who are outgoing like that, then you know you're gonna have a good time as long as they're not rambunctious. On top of that, if they're just outgoing and and super energetic, but not rambunctious and destructive or annoying to other people, then you're fine. Like going to, I used to go clubbing and go bar hopping with some friends, and I had a friend who was very energetic and it was so much fun. But whenever it was like game nights, like chill out, calm down, take a chill pill, go smoke weed or do something to cool, calm yourself down because you're a little out, you're a little too much for me right now. <laughs> it's like do something about that. <laughs> it's like a it's like the energetic child where you're like, okay, go outside, go run your stink off, and then come back. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I, I get the sense that he's really sincere. Um, I mean, even when, you know, even though he talks a lot of gossip stuff, I think it's done tastefully enough that I don't feel like even if, I don't feel like he would, I don't know. I don't get the sense that he would do that with his friends. Like even with Tati, Tati's been really nice to him and he's he'll admit that even when he kind of criticizes her he's still very nice about it in a lot of ways um, I mean he'll he'll say what he needs to say but he's also very nice about it so I feel like friend wise um, I feel like he's he might actually be fair on that front I don't know I don't know I'm just I don't know <laughs> oh um sorry I got off tangent again yeah, exactly. It's definitely amusement. It's it's just entertainment, you know. It's YouTube's the new celebrity reality TV. And it can be. I think people, especially younger people, um, it's really hard to draw the line between YouTube and entertainment value and this vlogger flexing that people do as opposed to real life. So because it's so, I'll say realistic and uh, it feels authentic, doesn't mean it necessarily is, but I think people are so easy to believe that everything they see on YouTube or everything that is being shown on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or whatever is so accurate because they're, you know, they're sitting there. I'm not wearing makeup and I'm just being real with y'all and, you know, life just is rough and, you know, and that's just just my life and it's like no that's that's not it's not really your life that's the life you're putting online that's the life you want people to see uh even with my own friends like they don't see everything in my life my sister doesn't even see everything in my life how are we supposed to believe that that's your real life like we're total strangers that you make money from off based on the ads that are displayed to us like really Really, I wasn't born yesterday, but some folks are still pretty young and naive. Anyway. Oh, is it truth? No, is it? I don't know. Truth sleuth? No, I have no idea. <laughs> As I said, I'm not really into the whole. The only reason I know some of these names is because I was watching Emily D. Baker for for a while. I haven't watched some of her stuff lately. I love her to death. Um, I watch, If I can, I sometimes catch her on Instagram live, but she just goes so, I mean, of course I'm one to talk since I've been on for an hour and 45 minutes or so now, but yeah, her live streams are pretty long. Um, and I usually don't catch them in time to be live because um, I'm usually working on something. So I go back to rewatch and it's like, ooh, 
do I have two and a half hours to, I don't know. It, and then after the whole Tati thing kind of died down a bit, it's like, okay, I'm interested in that case, but I don't have two hours to listen to that right now. So I've just kind of been, well, and then with YouTube in general, I haven't really been watching a lot lately. I don't know. I've, I've been binge watching TV a lot more than I have been YouTube. And it kind of teeters back and forth, but right now it's TV for sure. <sighs> and um, I actually talk a bit about some of my favorite TV shows in my video. That's why it's so long-winded. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Because otherwise it'll just be a repeat. <laughs> I agree. And people, oh, there's so much I could say on this. It's one of the biggest things that drives me bonkers as a makeup artist is when I've had people show me pictures of these girls that, or these women or whoever they see on Instagram. And they're like, I want to look like this. And it's like, okay, I can do this makeup look on you, but it's not going to look the same because you have different features. And, um, you have some fine lines, which is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with having fine lines, but you've got different lines on your face. So if I do this in this particular way, it's going to emphasize those lines. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, you can do it anyway. And then I do it and then they hate it. It's like, well, I told you. Yeah, it's just, ah, it's frustrating because it puts out these unrealistic standards of what makeup should look like on people, what real skin looks like. Um, and it just doesn't really accurately show what makeup really looks like on people. It's like if I put a concealer on under my eyes, it's not going to look smooth and, you know, it's not going to look like it does. My skin's not going to look the same as it does without the makeup. Because there's something being applied to the top of it. It's not being absorbed into the skin barrier. It's on top of it. So it's going to add texture. There's going to be texture. And that's the one thing that really irritates me the most. Is that just this inaccurate display of how makeup looks. No one has smooth skin. Um, I mean, my face looks smooth because of the lighting is bad in here. <laughs> and, but obviously I have fine lines. All of us have fine lines and texture. Um, blemishes you name it so it's just it's it's unfortunate really unfortunate oh yes viewers choice was it um nick and justin i don't remember Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you sam i appreciate that um with emily is it emily d baker emily noel which Emily? I feel like there's so many Emilys on YouTube these days. And I agree with Jamie and Bailey. I haven't watched a lot of Robert's videos recently. Um, I see some of them and I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. But then I forget about it. And, you know, videos get lost and everything. Um, I kind of go, who I watch kind of goes in ebbs and flows for, for, some periods and, and stretches of time, I'll watch like only two or three people. And then another stretch of time, I'll watch other people. Of course, I watch your guys' videos. But um, in general, like the larger YouTubers, that is. Um, like right now, I'm back to watching a lot of Emily Noel. Uh, and who was I? Who else was I just watching? Uh, Jen Love. Jen Love. Um, uh, and Jamie and Bailey. Yeah, those are the only ones I'm really watching right now. Um, or at least more intentionally watching. Um, but sometimes it's Jessica Braun or sometimes it's, um, who else? My goodness. I'm only subscribed to like 300 people. <laughs> and I can't believe I can't pull a name out of my head. Anyway. It, my chair is a little loud. Um, anyway, yeah. Have you been reading any good books? Actually, I'll show you the last book I read. I finished reading it yesterday. 
Oh, it's actually not backwards. Sometimes I do the camera and it's backwards. So I'm glad it's not. I had to read this for one of my classes. It's called Virtue Hoarders. It's very political. It's very, it's very interesting. She tears the Democrats apart. She tears liberals apart, but she also tears conservatives apart somewhat, but she's not conservative. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the politics, but this is the last book I read. It's very interesting. Oh, oh, I just saw your comment, Sam, about um, Claire and the artsy stuff. <laughs> but, okay, yeah, I, I agree. I'm not, that's not the kind of stuff that the filters, that's not the filter. That's not a filter. That's just an effect. Filters like Photoshop and blurring tools. Okay, I'll be honest. I will sometimes, if I have to, in my thumbnails, do a little Photoshopping for like hiding blemishes because obviously with thumbnails, you want people to click on it because they're not staring at this they see whatever it is you're showing so anything to detract that is it hurts you but other than that i don't touch photoshop for that stuff for anything yeah with jen's content it kind of ebbs and flows for me too i almost always watch her lives but i don't i'm obviously since i'm in the pacific coast it's 7 a.m when she goes live so i'm not usually up at 7 a.m on a sunday morning for most Sundays anyway. So I don't usually catch her live, but I do watch her lives at the end of the day. Sometimes I catch the what's up in makeup. Um, not always, but sometimes. Uh, and then sometimes she does content that's just unique and fun that I just, I immediately click on. Um, but she's someone that I think is really, she's kind of on par with my, my kind of personality that I like to watch. And just kind of this, an average person there's nothing you know that's what's the word i'm looking for it's not an ego it's not like egotistical not this whole self-inflated uh larger than life personality that is stretched you know i haven't tried any glam lift or wait House of Glam Dolls. Okay, sorry, I read that wrong. I haven't tried any of their products. Um, it sounds interesting. I think I I think you did a video on that, right? You had the two wheels, if I'm not mistaken. I love correct, color correcting. Actually, I keep referring to this video. I'm going to be uploading soon, so I, I apologize. It's not up yet. I had every intention of getting it up this morning, but life, you know, homework, you know, just, yeah. Anyway, I have... This concealer, it's not, the color itself is not meant to be, um, it's not a color correcting concealer, but it definitely is not my shade on purpose for the intention of color correction. So, yeah. Yeah, the whole... Yeah, the AOA, AOC thing, I actually didn't see that video. I remember it was post, like I saw the thumbnail and I thought it was kind of weird. Um, and I didn't have a chance to watch it. Uh, and I had actually watched the AOC video before. So I knew what it, was, what it was about and I didn't see anything wrong with it. And I'm just as woke as, you know, as <laughs> I'm pretty woke. Let's just say it that way. And I didn't see anything really wrong with what she said or did in that video. And then... Um, I only saw like the apology stuff afterwards and then I thought, oh, I, I didn't see the video, so I have no idea. And then she did a separate video apologizing for it. And it's like, oh, yeah, I guess if you criticize someone without knowing the full story, that's unfortunate and it's kind of a frustrating thing. Um, but as far as like problematic stuff, I don't think she's problematic um, at all. I think she kind of... I think she was trying to jump on a trend and it kind of blew up in her face, which is unfortunate. Um, and I think she realized that kind of doing more shock value content like that is not really what's authentic to her. So I think she realized that and I don't think she'll be doing anything like that ever again, at least in that sort of way.
trashy teen vampire novels. Is that like Twilight? No. <laughs> I actually have never read Twilight or any of those books. I think they came just a little after, well, I think it was late high school, but I, I just, I don't know. At that, I remember in high school, I was really into old English literature. Nerd. <laughs> like Jane Austen and the Bronte sisters. Um, I was really into um, post-Civil War American literature as well. So a lot of, um, oh my goodness, I can't even think. Uh, anyway, I, I'm just, in, I was really into classic literature. <laughs> I still am. But I've kind of branched out a little bit. But the only popular series I ever really read in school was the Harry Potter ones. I didn't really jump on any of the others. Uh, I can understand that about the, the snapback. I, I did see her as being, I did see that as being a little snippish uh, myself. Um, yeah, I, I think she realized that it was just not the right audience and the right way she went about it. Um, again, I didn't actually see her video. I didn't get, to, so I don't see the whole story and kind of getting the context together from both, both angles. So I guess maybe that's why. Um, I know a lot, it turned a lot of people off. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I forgot that the Twilight series had the, the second version from Edward's perspective. I actually, so I never read the books. I watched Twilight and then I watched the second movie. And I just was not the biggest fan. I thought the acting was a little weird. Um, I know the characters are meant to be awkward, but I just felt like Kristen Stewart was kind of an odd choice for the character. She was just, I mean, she was an, she was an awkward actress, awkward actress trying to play an awkward character. And the, mi the mix of the two was very awkward and not in the good awkward. If that makes any sense. <laughs> and then, uh, Robert Pattinson is also a decent actor, but I don't think that was his best work either. I think some of the stuff he did was a little overacted or just not natural feeling. Like he wasn't really, I don't know. I think he was so young at the time that he was just like, oh, great, this big role. And then, yeah, I don't know. I'm being critical. I I, I just wasn't a fan of him. <laughs> In Wuthering Heights, yes. Although Jane, I have a soft spot in my heart for Jane Eyre. That one I will say is my favorite of all the Bronte sisters books. Oh, Claire. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, we were actually well. AOC is Alexandria um, Ocasio Cortez. Cortez, blah, 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 Cortez, there we go. I'm like, why can't I say her name? Um, but yeah, Jen Love posted a video um, in response to this Vogue video that AOC did where she was doing her makeup and talking about political stuff. And I guess Jen Love posted a video where she was trying to follow along with AOC's makeup look, but she was also criticizing her for not being woke enough or I don't know, something like that. That's all I gathered from it. Yeah, AOC is kind of the face of the far left. She's one of the co-authors of the, or co-sponsors, excuse me, of the Green New Deal, which is pretty popular. Um, it's also, I think she's, She's a Latina woman um, that shows up in a lot of political articles, and she wears red lipstick, if that helps. And she's younger. She's, like, our age. Yeah, I think Kristen Stewart's talented in 
I just don't think that role was hers. And of course, I don't, well, I can't say if the writing was that good in comparison to what the actual book was. Uh, but I think the writing of the film and the script was a little, like it might read well in a book, but when it's actually acted out, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it just feels a little weird. Like the whole, um, uh, you know, you, you read it and it makes sense, but then when you read, when you write a script, you don't really, you don't want to have to write in the word, um, or, eh, or, uh, these weird little, little sounds. <laughs> I forgot there's a term for it, but you know, these weird little sounds that people make in between sentences, like the ums or whatever. I feel like they wrote those in and then she was just reading off the script. It was very awkward. Yeah, Taylor Lautner is cute. He reminded me of some of the boys I grew up with <laughs> on the res. LA Push. LA Push. I mean, I'm not sure. LA Push, La Push. Are you talking about forks? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Sorry. <laughs> I I know I know we talked about it like forks is being a real place. Um and that I drove through forks. But I don't remember. It was La Push something in um Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, little push. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, Forks is a cute little tiny town um, on Highway 101. And as you drive through it, there's a couple gas stations, a couple restaurants, a couple of coffee stands, and then a bunch of trees. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, I, I drove through. I didn't stop on any of the res because at the time I was driving through Forks, it was later in the afternoon. And I wanted to, um, I still wanted to make it to the whole rainforest and kind of drive through there. My goodness, sorry, I have a little cat here in my nose again. Eh. Um, but anyway, the the whole rate, the whole rainforest, and I say that, and I'm going to spell it out so you don't think it's something else. <laughs> um, and that is named after I think tribal, something tribal. Um, but yeah, the beaches on on the actual coast are amazing. I can't. Well, I showed the pictures on Facebook of like Ruby Beach and and such, but I the video footage I took. I can't wait to actually get that video up. Um, I find, it took me forever to get all that footage uploaded into my Dropbox account. And then I ha downloading it took forever too for some odd reason. So that'll that'll be soon-ish. I have like five videos that are sitting in my queue to be edited. <sighs> Editing is just not as fast as it used to be for me anymore. I wish I were YouTube famous so I could hire an editor. <laughs> uh, such is life. Such is life. Yes, you you got it right. Some, well, I don't know about the spelling, but yeah, you you've got the right idea. Macaw. Yeah, something along those lines. There's Quinault. Um, there's there's actually quite a few tribes out there. There's Quinault. Uh, I don't know all the coastal tribes since I'm not from, my tribe's not Washington, it's Montana, so. You too, Claire, thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, oh, I, I still have two more things. I need to, I just realized, two more items to pull. So if each of you want to pick one more number between 1 and 1446, then I'll be good to go with my, my next Project Pan stuffs, or Project Empties. Excuse me, I need to actually say that correctly. Project Empties. 
Aw. Bye, Clara. Have a good night. Sweet dreams. Even my kitty cat is going to sleep. <laughs> Are you sleepy, kitty? Oh, thanks, Claire. 19 and 24, good numbers. Okay, 19, scroll all the way back up. Anastasia, oh, oh, <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> ABH, Brow Wiz, and Auburn. <laughs> uh, so, hmm. Auburn being red. <laughs> I don't know. I I probably should throw that one away. <laughs> brow Wiz Auburn. <laughs> so two brow products. Maybe we should respin. Respin. Is it 24? Is another ABH. Ooh, the Carly Bible palette. I am down for that. I love that palette. It's so pretty. I haven't used it enough. So I'm excited. That is a definite yay moment. Um, the ABH Brow Wiz. So it's the Auburn eyebrow pencil. I bought it when I was a redhead. Um, I actually have the Brow Pomade and the Brow Wiz in Auburn. Because I would plan to be red for a while and then I decided, nah, I'm good. I could still make it work. I can still, I can blend it in with some of the other stuff that I have. I'll just have to make a point to take the time to do it. Hmm. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. I'll play with it and see because it's, it's a little bit of a drier formula. And it's a very... Hmm, it's kind of an ash, it, well, I won't say ashy, that's not the right word. It's a, it's a unique kind of tone, actually. I have the brow blade, oops, that's not the brow blade. Just kidding, I saw it, the brow blade's purple, so I was going to try to show you how similar it was to that, but never mind. Just kidding, because the brow product I have in here is something different. No, it's not in here. I thought maybe it was, but I was wrong. Mm. But I'll, I'll have to look at that and see um, if that will work for our lips. So I'll put a question mark next to it. And if not, then I will find a way to make it work with my brows. Okay, my voice is fried. I've been chatting for almost two hours straight. I haven't had to do this since I worked in sales. So I think I'm going to call it and say adieu. Um, we'll chat on Facebook. Thanks for hanging out with me and for helping me choose my project pan stuff. So quick recap, the Urban Decay Brow Blade, Beauty from the Earth Pigment in Ushakaron, L'Oreal Infallible Lip Cream and Forbidden Kiss, ABH Brow Wiz and Auburn and ABH Carly Bible Palette. Yay. Uh, thanks, you too. Yeah, if, if it doesn't work, I'll just toss it. I mean, no one else is going to be able to use it. So, alrighty, have a good one. Hopefully things, um, you know, get less frustrating with your littles. <laughs> Bye.